Hi, this podcast will give you a brief overview of our study on pain in adults with cerebral palsy. It's freely available in developmental medicine and child neurology. My name is Elisabeth Rulby Buske. I'm a physical therapist and associate professor in orthopedics. And my co-authors are Anne Oleksson Schmidt and Johan Jarl, and we all work at Lund University, Sweden. We did a cross-sectional study based on data from our follow-up program of 1,591 adults with cerebral palsy in Sweden, ranging from 16 to 76 years, and included all levels of the GMFCS, MAX, CFCS, and EDAX. A majority of the adults, 23%, were actually classified at GMFCS level 5. We looked at several pain variables, including who reported their pain, self versus proxy, current pain, pain sites, pain severity the last four weeks, ranging from non to very severe, and also pain interference with normal activity, work and sleep, ranging from not at all to extremely. 66% of the adults had pain, with a slightly higher prevalence in females, in those who could self-report their pain, and in adults with more efficient communication classified at CFCS level 1. We also found that adults have pain in more body sites than previously reported for children, and from a median of three body sites. The most common pain site was the spine and back reported by 33%, followed by pain in the lower extremities, and around 20% reported pain from either the neck, upper extremities, head or stomach. We also looked at the mean level of pain severity with 95% confidence intervals for different body sites. And the body sites are indicated with different colors that you can see in the upper left corner. Females reported a slightly higher mean level of pain severity for most body sites and an odds ratio of 1.72 for severe pain compared to males, even when we adjusted for age, GMFCS and CFCS levels. Older adults were at a higher risk for severe pain with an odds ratio of 2.4 in 50 to 76 year olds compared to 16 to 19 year olds. Adults classified at GMFCS level 5 were three times more likely to have severe pain with odds ratios of 2.98 compared to adults at GMFCS level 1 when adjusted for age, sex and CFCS level. Both pain prevalence and pain severity were associated with the ability to communicate efficiently. Adults classified at CFCS level 2 to 5 were less likely to report pain or severe pain, with odds ratios ranging from 0.35 to 0.65 compared to those at CFCS level 1. We also found that adults who rely on proxy reports are less likely to report pain compared to those who self-report their pain, with an odds ratio of 0.66 for pain and 0.49 for severe pain. Pain interferes with activity and work in 60% of all the adults who report pain, ranging from a little bit in 28% to extremely in 4%. Pain also interferes with sleep in 47%, ranging from a little bit in 20% to extremely in almost 5%. Severe and very severe pain were six times as likely to interfere with activity and sleep. In summary, our key findings are that two of three adults with cerebral palsy have pain from a median of three body sites, and pain is most likely underreported in adults who do not communicate efficiently already at CFCS level 2 and in those who rely on proxy report, and the magnitude of this association is really a cause for concern. Pain interferes with both normal activities, work and sleep, and we must find ways to assess pain more efficiently, especially in adults with less efficient communication, and also treat pain more effectively in adults with cerebral palsy. If you want to read more, you can find the full text article at Wiley. Thank you.